Welcome back to another episode here in our Houston Texans franchise. We just got done absolutely decimating the Cleveland Browns, who uh, I don't know what it is. I know their roster is definitely worse than it was before, but I don't know exactly what it is that has made them so unbelievably garbage. But they're terrible. They're winless, and the way we played them last week, the way you know they played... You can tell why they're winless, of course. We are now about to face off against the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe a breakout. Ma like, maybe. Perhaps? A like, maybe? Any? Can we even get to week eight? Is that is that even possible? No breakout. We do have a mock draft update. Of course, the Eagles, a lower overall team than us, but most teams are, if not every team. And uh, we will take a look at this mock draft. Obviously, it's the second mock draft. I don't even know where the hell we are. Probably 32, right? We're at 28, not feeling us here. They say edge, which I suppose, you know, depth, maybe. This wear guy looks insane, though. 6'6", 315. I mean, I don't know about the potentials, but insane. The Niners with a running back, I mean, why not? Honestly, what do we really need, though? Safety, probably? So maybe a first-round safety, just in case we lose Petrie or something like that. You can't really get away with tagging a guy twice. Have we even looked at our contracts? Man, now that I'm thinking about it, we have a lot to do still. But a weekly award. No breakout, but a weekly award. Christian Harris comes back from injury, crushes it with a fumble recovery, a pick six, and 12 tackles. Absolutely absurd. Lamar Jackson, low, uh, you know, volume, but high success. Let's take a look now at our roster. Then we'll take a look at the injuries of the Eagles and their actual team itself. This is what our team looks like. It's obviously great. Spreading the ball around a lot, right? There's no one wide receiver that's killing it. Pierce is definitely on, you know, off to a down season for his standards, but that's also still like a top 10 running back in the league uh, for everyone else's standards. And then looking at the defense, we already have some upgrades and a bunch of high devs. I mean, this team really is just... The, the only thing standing in their way is them. It really is. So got to get to actually playing like the superstars that they are and uh, maybe potentially make our way into a Super Bowl. But let's take a look at the Eagles team. We are obviously healthy for once, and the Eagles are also healthy. So no you know, excuses here. It is all fair game. You can cry about your team's roster building, but that has nothing to do with unlucky injuries. That's just the way they built the team, right? So that's not on us. It's not on anyone. It's not on the football gods. Of course, Jalen Hurts, that throw power really does hurt. Everything else, though, is amazing. So we'll see what happens here in this one. Swift is still here. A little surprised by that, but... Very jukey, very speedy. Barrow, not a bad little backup running back, so they got, you know, injury insurance. Wide receiver one and two are great. Number three is even decent with a, you know, slot ability. Uh, Goddard's a great tight end one. Mylotta's amazing. Dickerson's great. Center is new because Jason Kelsey obviously retired by now. Jurgens ended up playing right guard. And Lane Johnson's right tackle, so they actually kept pretty much everyone I expected, so... A little surprised by this quote-unquote lack of overall. Maybe the defense really took a hit because Slay obviously would be really low overall if not retired. Uh, McQueen looks pretty good, though, up and coming. Sweat still looks pretty good. Jalen Carter taking that number one role over, but really not looking great. I don't know what it is because his overall is great, but his ability to actually get to the quarterback is not very good. His block shed's decent, but... If the power move's not good, you would expect that to be higher. Jordan Davis is locked in at only 82 block shed. I'm not really sure what's happening in their DTs, but they're not progressing. Very good finesse still from Hassan Reddick. Middle linebackers, uh, they got some speed. N'Kobe Dean hasn't really developed yet. Very raw, but very speedy. Same with uh, Nolan Smith on the other side. It's supposed to be an edge rusher. It's a weird scheme, in fairness. Uh, corner, they are definitely taking a, a bit of a hit there, so they need someone new as Bradbury is just... I mean, too slow to even start. This could be a big game for our boundary. Uh, and then Joe Tate, really good safety. X-Factor with 90 speed. Uh, you know, 80-plus zone. Uh, Jair Brown, very slow. Very good man coverage. Maybe needs to be their future corner. And then play uh, Mr. Sidney Brown as the starter, perhaps. But another guy with a really good man, not great zone. So, yeah, the, the Eagles defense seems to be worse than it was before. But their offense is still looking really good. So... There shouldn't be a whole lot of excuses for them, but what we want to do is probably limit the short pass game as that will also help us stop the run in theory. And then what we want to attack is probably that secondary is they're ranked 30th in the league. Let's go with throw it medium and get into these uh, training practices. 
as far as our upgrades go, a lot of them. A lot of backups in general as well, though. So let's do the starters, and then I'll do the backups on my own. Uh, 92 overall now for Christian Harris. Going with Run Stopper. Getting two to zone, one to man. I mean, kind of the wrong thing, but you know what? That's why we do Run Stopper, because it was better than any pass coverage upgrade I'll ever get. Slot, even though we need zone coverage, because we want to add speed, and we don't get that speed, but we get that Excel. Definitely need to go to zone coverage now. Pearson, uh, Pearson, I always change his name every time, is definitely a guy that, uh, could go up in dev, and if he does, he was worth the pick, every, uh, every penny of it. Uh, no Benogny, kind of not really a starter anymore. Still debating on if I want to put regression sliders on, or maybe manually drop devs if they don't deserve it, in my opinion. Because, like, once you get that dev, you can't go down, despite the fact that a lot of the guys on the team really aren't playing that well. You know, we have all these superstars and X-Factors on defense, yet, in general, we're kind of a bad defense. Uh, Matthias King, I think we were just continuously going with Scrambler, who gets him two to short, two to medium. That's a really good upgrade. Need that deep accuracy, but once again, we talked about it. A guy that is on the come up, uh, you know, especially with paranoid sense of pressure, you just want to get one or two things really good. You can't really be a jack of all trades, right? It's going to take you a long time to get there. Uh, and then Dorian Wall is a weird player because it's like, is he really power back? He's got the size and the strength, but. The speed and, I mean, the agility, really, to play anything. So, I want him to be a power back, but you really could go any uh, route you want. So, we'll see what we get. One to truck, one to stiff arm, one to, to strength. That strength is now 85. Maybe he could play freaking fullback. And then our favorite upgrades ever, upgrading offensive lineman. A plus three, dude. What is that? Like, if that was a wide receiver, running back, cornerback, you know, those positions, and it was a plus three to speed, maybe... But anything else, any other plus three is pretty much garbage throw power. You know, the, the obvious ones. I think last video, someone mentioned a slider check. This is what we're rocking right now. I'm honestly, just like previous Maddens, really thinking that the more you mess with the sliders, the more the game just breaks on its own. And even though I edit these in the main menu, I save them and then I import them here every time. It still just seems like base all Madden at times is harder than our sliders, which... I mean, realistically, obviously, these aren't fully maxed, but these sliders should re feel really tough, right? Their coverage should be really good. And, I mean, this upcoming matchup here against the Eagles, their coverage should suck. So, if they're at least tight on us somewhat, I'm, I'm going to assume that the sliders work. But if not, I really just think that the game is just still so flawed. But going back to those contracts like we were talking about, we got to get to business here. Murray is an interesting name now. I really love Murray... Yeah, I mean, our money is not where we would like it to be. I mean, I think you're losing players here, right? 90 mil, 99 mil, you have to save money for Clayton. I mean, there is there's some money to be spent, uh, but let's let's spend that money. So a seven-year deal worth 151. I kind of wish I didn't click that because I wanted to see what that is worth. What is that, 25 per? Maybe a little less? I don't even know, but that's a lot of money. Petrie's great, but can I afford to keep him? I don't know. Tunsil, obviously we're keeping. Threat Detector alone is ability. That's good enough. 45 million left. Despite the fact that we still have names like Shaquille... Uh, not Shaquille Barrett. Shaq Mason. Trent Brown. Uh, half the factor in Clayton. Fairburn, even though I love him, has got to be gone. That kicker we've been holding on to is going to start, I think. That's 20-some mil there. Petrie wants like 15-ish. Murray wants 15-ish. I think we're up against this maybe too hard. I don't know. We have red interest here from freaking Murray, so I don't even know if we're going to get him on a 3 or 45. 15 mil per. Not good enough, by the way. Petrie is safety. I mean, somebody's going to be a casualty here. And is it going to be a linebacker? Is it going to be a safety? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't want to look at this anymore because it's, it's kind of stressing me out a little bit. And one final thing before we go into the match, we got to take a look at these X Factors. Jalen Hurts, who has run and gun, jukebox, gunslinger, threat detector, fast break, and anchored extender. AJ Brown with wide receiver apprentice, run off elite, short out elite, and max security. Joe Tate has persistent, outmatched, and selfless. Devontae Smith has bruiser, slot apprentice, deep in elite. Fool me once, and nasty shriek for Lane Johnson. Hassan Reddick with. No outsider strip specialist and a very good ability in edge threat. Dallas Goddard, mid-out elite, short-out elite, very good stuff there. 
Uh, DeAndre Swift with Spin Cycle, not bad. Closer, not great, especially when he's not X Factor. And then Return Man, which is just horrible. Jordan uh, Davis, Reach Elite, inside stuff, very valuable. Strip Specialist is average. And then Dobbins, who's young, second win, but apparently a superstar. And a little bit of a change of pace. We're going to be getting the ball first, which is not super common. And uh, man, is Judge looking fast on the return. He's not even, like, got the ball yet. Only gets to the 19, but that's because our special teams is... Well, remove their teams out of that, I suppose. Uh, CJ Stroud, definitely not his usual season. 14 touchdowns, a 7 interceptions, just under 2,000 yards. Definitely picking it up, though. The, uh, the touchdown pick ratio was looking really bad. It's definitely been cleaned up a little bit. Uh, but the run game, like we said... For any other back, not actually bad. But for Mr. Pierce, pretty garbage. Going to be running this back left. Very uh, confusing type of offense here as Pierce is going to show off a little bit of speed and gains about six on the run. Don't remember if we maxed out the speed for staff, but we're definitely getting closer with that. If not, uh, Hassan Renick with edge threat. We'll see if he reads this or not. And he will not. TJ Stroud's not fast, but he has an angle and is out running Brown. Which Brown is that? I don't know. Really late hit. I would have taken that. I would have faked it. 24 yards for CJ Stroud on the read option. Running in hard on that one, as most teams probably against that ferocious defense like to slow it down like we did early and, you know, get that run game going. And we came straight out with the read, which they were, uh oh, over pursuing. And speaking of over pursuing, uh, Hassan Reddick, kind of relentless early going in on the uh, ball carrier. This time we did keep it, but it wasn't a read option. So that is going to be a sack of 11 yards. Hassan Reddick uh, beats the right tackle. I mean, we had pretty good time. It's just it was definitely collapsing, ran out of time, and sadly would not have had the time for the deep in for Nico. So throw away would have been the best uh, you know bet. But try to do too much as we do and take a potential drive killer sack. But let's see. Maybe a quick throw is in the works. Not at all. Coverage is great like we talked about. So uh, and here it is. Maybe should have went with a uh, a screen pass. But taking a shot here. Rudolph. I mean, he's going against uh, Bradbury. And he has the look. Bradbury should not be playing outside. He really just should not be. That was too easy. Press man, it's never going to work. And got a little ahead of myself, so we missed the stats for Mr. Jalen Hurts. But either way, let's see where we're at. And that is going to be a perfectly timed ball. Nice little spin fall. And Will Anderson injured. Ribs are gone. And if he's seriously injured, the thumbnail is going to look so weird because he put his hand in his rib. I think he's missing a rib. And there goes a missing defender. As that's a wide open lane for 28 for Swift. The longest play and run of the game. Even longer than CJ Stroud's big run as our defense looks beatable as it usually does, sadly. Houston on that edge. I don't think we're going to get much success. If we can do that, though, which is miss Jalen Hurts by an inch... It's something. It's some value. Why is he holding Sermon like that? Pectoral strain. All right. Don't have to see that stupid thing now. Bringing a bit of a blitz on five, which is, I don't know, a good decision or not. Murray, we did not pay, but we may have to. And wow, what a hit by Sermon. I felt like he was just a slight bit too late, but the hit was apparently good enough to knock that ball out. And what looked like a freebie for his down is now a third and three in field goal range but you don't want to get rid of that and I didn't know who that was too but AJ Brown jumped like he knew it was coming there fourth and three will be a field goal missed opportunity back to back by the Eagles first a drop then a bad throw thought he was going to go to the tight end but didn't they're going to get three points and we're going to be up by four even though we look like we weren't going to score first drop seven yard is gained on the first play read option from CJ Stroud again and they're not going to read it. Nobody really gets outside. And I risk it for more. Get three on the play. I'm just feeling a little dangerous today, you know? I just want a little bit of danger. Play action back left. Oh, my God. And there's a fumble recovered by the offensive line, it seems. Tunsil. Instant pressure is going to lead to a sack. Maybe we just run the ball. Eagles defense, especially that pass rush. Relentless. 
And I'm, I'm feeling the pressure again. Sliding for a gain of almost 10. Really makes you feel uneasy out here. But third down, I mean, we live and die by these, these downs at times. And that is a dime of a throw. Boyer to the 35. I mean, he just pushed that ball right to him. Boom. Dime. Didn't necessarily need to be, but just a really good throw. Just a really good throw. One-on-one -on -one Ford. And that is right where I wanted it. Oh, Ford slips off. Shows off the speed and scores. Another kind of big touchdown. I mean, this Eagles defense is no joke. But the coverage, the secondary, is so bad. Their secondary is just terrible. I mean, Bradbury is just so slow. If, if it wasn't for him, you know, it's, that's our first touchdown. That's our first points in general. All right, they have all the options in the world here on second and two. That O-line pushes us, but Hurts gets blasted on a read option attempt. Sermon taking it down for a loss of two. Another short second down, not converted. And now you're looking at a tougher third down. And that is going to be a perfect route on the inside and a huge gain to the 45 on the first down. Played off a little bit there. My lot is great, but let's see if Griffin can make a play anyways. Not going to happen, and that's risky. Harrison is probably not the guy you want to do that against, although he seemingly has no hands. So as far as turnover goes, probably not going to happen, but you never know. Deflection to someone that actually can catch the ball. And we get a nice move, but that's going to force Jalen Hurts out of the pocket, which is a benefit, and he's taking hits 20-plus on the ground for another first down. Coverage has been pretty good, but the run defense has been terrible, whether it be a scramble, a read option, or just a straight-up handoff. And another read option, and what a cut by Jalen! He's getting pancakes, but tackled. I really wasn't even looking near him. I thought it was green field ahead, and it was going to be us versus him one-on-one. -on -one. What a tackle from behind by what appears to be Christian Harris. That was close. And it was double drags. What a catch by Goddard. Had to take a guess on who was going to get it. And we kind of went closer to our zone. And we were quote-unquote wrong. You I mean, kind of have to cover your guy in your zone. So I don't really much that can be done there. As Christian Harris is running in the blitz lane. But they ran away from him. Still gets him from behind for five. And... Hey, let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Christian Harris lined up over Devante. And another run on the inside. Cutback lane is always happening. They still gain a yard, but we did a really good job there with Petrie nearing the end of the first quarter. And Philadelphia is facing a tough third and four right now. we got to zoom out over there and then slant here. And, I mean... That guy right there, Virgil Gold. Kind of playing like gold as he's burned Stingley multiple times. Now, this time in man coverage on a slant this time before it was like a deep in. And that will be a touchdown. Pretty big play to, you know, get them back within one possession. Every team a run a read option. I'm going to go with this because I think it's going to be a blitz. So over the middle could be open. Going to go to the running back who is pretty clean. Try to juke, gain seven, eight. And that'll be in the first quarter. Two really big throws, maybe three big throws. Already uh, after one quarter, putting us at 150 through the air. And as much as uh, I like this look to Collins, I'm going to let it hit that second quarter as we're up four. Don't want to do anything too crazy. We did get the ball first, so kind of expect to be up, but the Eagles will not go away. And there's been some, uh, some interesting ones in this one. Some really good pass rush uh, reps. You know, some pretty decent coverage, but also at the same time, some big plays where they get burned. And we're going to take this all the way outside. And what a block by Nico as Pierce pretty much just has to rely on the vision and easily gets the first down and then some. Play action over the middle. The Ford is a decent look. Do I really trust Rudolph running across a superstar? And we're in some trouble, but that is a dot with the angle. No touchdown. Wow, with Bradbury, though? Bradbury being burned so much might have actually helped him get that stop. I thought Ford had the angle for the score, but hey, that's a great play anyways. First down, two for 54 yards. And we're going to run that outside. And, oh, I did not see that. I should have known when I see Nico run deep. Nothing on the ground for the first time in ages. Now we're going with an RPO. As the inside still looks open, I don't like the angle we're running at, but 
could be decent. And there is nobody there. Washington runs free as the offensive line wins the rep. Going with a long, drawn-out uh, play-action type of RPO. Mackey's probably the quick look. And wide open was Rudolph, and I just kind of missed the read. Another RPO, but they have a superstar on him. Even if it is a slow player, he's probably a smart player, which is not wrong. As Pierce gains maybe two or three. But those play actions, those misdirections, those type of plays are usually pretty good and they're kind of moving for us, so that's why I'm kind of going to it. Oh, I was way too early, and that is... I mean, it's a pretty badly run route by Nico anyways. I don't know why I thought he was going to go inside a little bit more than that, I th or faster than that. I think I still threw it early. Anyways, it'll be a field goal. Going with a fake mid, dropping back with Murray on Mr. Gold. Or things might change. Can we... Um, are we lined up? I don't know if we are, but I guess it works out. The guy that was stuck over there ended up switching the running back anyways, or the tight end, one of the two. So it didn't probably matter. And having two superstar tight ends does definitely feel a certain way, and Swift taking a pretty tough one-on-one -on -one tackle against the linebacker. Gains three, or is actually Sermon, apparently. B you know, built like a linebacker anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but... We're speaking technically, and the RPO, we're going to get out there, but Gold, who is making some plays for them, slips off of a, you know, a big linebacker tackle. We kind of had the angle. He had a little bit of momentum, but we kind of had the angle. I thought maybe we had a chance there. So very big play for him to get them that first down as Glover forces the issue, but Swift wide open. We miss hard. Mr. Christian Harris gets into the 44, but that will be another first down as the Eagles... Have a chance to tie it up this drive. We're going to go crazy on this side. Leaving that right wide open, though. And trying to turn. We get the blitz with Pearson, the rookie. We brought in seven, was it? I believe six or seven. And we got a freebie. They didn't pick it up. They didn't see it coming. And we did a really good job with Christian Harris on the other side to block. You know, cover three routes pretty much at once without being clean. Obviously, he had uh, the drag right out of the gate, but you know, with that much pressure in your face and pretty good coverage of all players, and it's all for nothing, what can you really do? But first down, Devontae Smith. I mean, it's another blitz, but it's not a sellout like the other one. The other one was kind of a sellout. That one, we should have had players there. We just didn't. I'm going to use your Sermon Deet. And, uh oh, Jalen Hurts got room. And what a blast by Sermon. Kind of wish Murray would have gone in on him a little bit, but 50-plus for Mr. Jalen Hurts. And I've got to say, blitzing has gotten us places, so I am going to blitz. And we're out there. Nice tackle by Sermon. Really good tackling from him so far. Four yards gained is, is better than a lot more than four yards gained, I suppose. Move him over slightly. As it could be a run there, but it might be another RPO back out. It's going to not be any of the things. And Swift might score. Scott, pretty good tackle, but yet another first down to the six. We're in like a cross blitz. Super bait. Oh, the read option. We didn't get over there. Need some help. And missed. It does Stingley. Great job on the backside by Peter, but it's going to be a very manageable first or second in goal at the one. One whole yard. And Petrie's going to blow it up. Needs help. Gets it. Loss of two. Third and goal from the three. Two-minute warning. It seemed like it was the back. Uh, what the hell are we doing here? I think we faked this out. Oh, and he gets there. He got help, but that's a play and a half. Henry Toto -to across from Mr. A.J. Brown. He's going to bring the attention of Jalen Hurts to that spot. Sees the drop-off. Sees the blitz. And Christian Harris is not a guy you want to test. So the bait was on. He had a double look. And with the blitz there, it was perfect. And they say that I can't dial something up. We dialed it up that time. That was a tricky little play. And it will hold them to a field goal. Of course, we call the timeout, giving us about two minutes with two timeouts to get that point or more back. Deep return for Mr. Judge. And, oh, I didn't believe in that. Wow, what a cut. He is so quick. Judge as, like, a specialty kind of runner, you know, on the offense could be something. Sweeps and maybe a handoff or two. Don't know if he has the durability. 
But his ability to change a direction is potentially unmatched on this roster. I'm not saying something because we got speed everywhere. And that, that screen barely gets out there. As we're going to get a bit of a convoy and a massive gain to the 49 is made despite the screen almost never even existing. Struggling to get that ball out. The clock doesn't need to be, you know, had right now. I hope Boyer uh, goes vertical. And he might have, but Pierce was cleaner. I'll still keep the timeouts for now. Y trail forward to the outside. Looks like, uh, you know, some sort of deeper zone, so... Might have to go short. Boyer is wide open on the inside. Should be a field goal. I think just to get a play call in that we want. Timeout. Not because we need it, but because we want it. Boyer over the middle could be our look as well. And we're in some trouble. Risky. Little overthrown. Could have been picked. Uh, I trusted Nico, and he was there, but it's not really much he could do on that overthrow. Risky, risky. Once again, we got to take the field goal if it's there. Seven-point lead in halftime, even with their ball, is still much better than a pick that could lead to more points for them. Great third to the outside, and Rudolph is going to take that up to the four with a whole timeout left. This is looking good, as opposed to a half timeout, of course. And this looks clean to Pierce. Wide open. A little bit of a late throw, but it gets there. Clean catch, clean throw, and... That will be a massive touchdown drive, but I suppose with three timeouts, they still have time themselves. Go back to Griffin, who I don't know if he's ever going to beat Mylotta, and that's going to be a really quick throw. Nice slip off. Really good fight. I mean, if it gives them anything, it gives them uh, an idea that the guys want to score. Don't know if that's uh, still enough for them to take this chance. Inside, Goddard cooking up, gets blasted. Well, we're wasting a lot of time on that one, though. That one was a probably not smart decision to fight. As we're pretty deep at the moment, trying to protect the end zone as much as possible. And right over the middle again. I mean, oh my god, that hit. I don't know if it's going to lead to anything, but I suppose it leads to a shot play if they want it. Let's see if they take it. It does look like a, uh, a Hail Mary, if you ask me. And it's not, apparently. And Jalen Hurts almost made a really crazy play there because he would have had himself a chance to the outside for, like, I don't even know, 15, 20, maybe more field goals probably had. So it was a decent, like, decision to maybe try and trick us into to giving him a chance. And that throw is severely underthrown, and it's going to be picked off by Mr. Uh, is it Flot? I don't even know who caught that. It looked like it was a superstar, but I guess not. Either way, we are up by 11. A little bit of a duck there at the end for the Hail Mary. It happens, especially if you're a little under pressure. Kind of pressured himself, to be fair there. But yards are on our side, scores on our side. But they do have the ball on their side to start this second half. Looking at some of these games, a couple of low-scoring, close, very important games. But also a uh, you know, couple of high scorers, a couple of 35-plus pointers in there, multiples of that. And the Rams winning 40-0. to over the Panthers, which is just ridiculous. But obviously, so far, things have gone pretty well for us. Their defense doesn't really seem to be able to do much. Pass rush, I mean, it really slowed down after that one really good drive. And coverage is just, as we kind of expected for the most part, it's getting weaker and weaker. And that boundary is weak, and they've pretty much been forced to keep a safety over top. All right, here we go. Starting the second half off with two players in the zone on defense. Hudson. He's had some pretty good success and kind of gets pushed off his spot. A lot of players getting smoked there, but Christian Harris, once again, that's why we needed him back so badly. The last line of defense almost on a potential huge run to start the second half off. And once again, oh, nice knockout by Stingley, though. I don't know if that's his ability, but Gold winning the route, but just not finishing the play. All right, let's try to get a, a rush with Hudson. Not going to happen, and curl route. What a dive by Clayton, and that will be a punt, I think. I mean, he even threw it away from the DB, and still somehow Clayton used that speed to get there. That was pretty impressive. His judge is going to be on the return here, and showing off that speed, can't quite get out there. The punter was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, I don't like this. Of course, Damian Pierce, yards, touchdowns, lower than he'd expect, but once again up there on the list for everyone across the league and start on offense with two in the zone players as well 
And that is risky, but it's caught by Nico. I really thought I could get that in there a little sooner than that. Maybe I missed the read. It seemed like the zone dropped hard there. And I was about to throw a freaking pick. Surprised I didn't still, to be honest. Back up tight end. A little underthrown behind him. Diving lineman. Gain seven, though. Mackey. Second and three from the 48-yard line. Quick throw out to Pierce, who is in the zone. Does not break a tackle, though. Gains four. And I got to say, them punting early on is not a good sign for their chances to win. We're going to start this one out with a screen. This set of downs gets it out there. And a really good blocking. Pierce fighting, spinning forward for the first down. Read option. I don't know if a tackle for a loss knocks us out of the zone, but I don't really care either way. Won't be able to find out. Crazy cutback, a little speed boost. Thought the cutback was worth it, but the edge rusher, even though he didn't look it, was actually pretty athletic. See if we maybe get that smoke screen on him. Perfect throw to the tight end who gets the first down. I like that press look, but we'll see. And yeah, I mean, that's where Bradbury should be playing. The slot, if anywhere, because of that speed. Because when it comes to those like RPOs and uh, whatnot, he actually is you know, pretty on it. He just can't keep up anymore because he's so old. I'm going to spread him out a little bit and see how they handle it. Maybe even streak Boyer. I really like that look, but Boyer's streak is kind of dangerous. I should have taken it. And I just threw a pick. I don't know how that's not picked. Do we have Gambit? What do we, what do we have with Shroud? It is Gambit, which saved the hell out of us. Which will be a dot to the outside for the two-yard line. 300-plus yards on the day. No interception because of Gambit. One hell of ability for a CPU franchise, i got to say it. And they're on this. And it's not going to knock them out of the zone, though, because it is not an incompletion. Although I imagine a, a sack probably would. They're in pretty good coverage. And let's find out, I guess. <laughs> right if I not. I didn't think Jordan Davis had that speed on him, but he does. Back to the screen, and it will. So a sack will just knock out any quarterback, which makes sense. It should. Taking a sack freaking kills the drive, let alone the momentum of a certain player. Oh, my God. Killing Bradbury, who is obviously a bit older, but... Still setting up a cleaner field goal, I guess. Sustaining a longer drive than them, which ends up taking off quite a bit of clock and gives us a 14-point lead, but still not over by any means. As 27 points is still obtainable for them. Huge hit up the middle. Swift's played pretty well, but A, the, the volume of carries has dropped tremendously, and that was a big hit in general. I mean, there's really not many players on this team that are, like, weak. As uh, Oh, that's a big play. Both running backs getting involved a lot in the pass game. Cover four just because uh, I want those safeties deep. And Christian Harris doesn't get there. Should have known it was going to be a, uh, a run, but at the same time. What do we got going for ourselves? Man coverage. Backup running back has done nothing. Can't expect them to run it again. And I should have been there to help him. Don't know how uh, Petrie's not smoking him there, but sure. Literally lined it up for him to just crush him, and he did nothing. And probably supposed to be over there. Huge hit by Murray. Going to go with Sermon on the user. Creep in the middle of the field. And quick out. Kind of initiated a contact on Pearson, if anything. And missed uh, the timing all on his own. All right, Will Anderson not in the zone, but still good. Oh, that was a good move. Oh, it was, apparently wasn't. And the tight end is open. I think you got to go for this. You're down by 14, almost entering the four. This is a go-for situation. And even though it looks kind of read option runny, I can't, like, run commit. Harris needs to drop just in case it is a throw. And the RPO is going to not score, but we'll give him the first down. That's a pretty good play. Great block by whoever initiated that contact. That was crazy good blocking. A lot of random pieces moving around here. And a handoff on the inside. Worried about that RPO again. And it will close the gap to one touchdown. I do got to say, though, I was personally feeling a uh, potential inside slant look. And I don't get the throw off. They come with a crazy blitz. And the fourth quarter will start with a very optimistic Philadelphia team. I mean, we had Rudolph for a potential touchdown, even pump fake for good measure, and they just came with the house, which saved them. 
If the corners were halfway decent on this team, there would be no question about it. This Eagles defense would be very hard to beat. Boyer, wide open. That's a big gainer. Use the power. Gets to the 40. Maybe could have went with a juke move. Doesn't really have that in him. And, I mean, he's seen the running back peeling out, which is an easier throw in fairness, but you've got to keep that deep play from uh, developing. The outside and pretty good blocking. Rudolph shoot enough. Kind of looking like a horse galloping. This is a decent little drive. Once again, those DBs, they're just atrocious. Oh, they almost saved the Boyer play, too. As I'm um, well, the T line not looking much better there as they give up a hole. Pierce with only six rushes in this game, though. But it makes sense. Their D line, especially with inside stuff, is not bad. A lot of RPOs where the the receiver is open as well. Oh my god, what a play by him. Was that Sydney? Who was that? Blew the blocking on that one, that's for sure. RPO, I am so bad at the reading this one. Oh, is he? Oh, oh, and he drops it anyways. Wow. Over the line, but dropped for whatever reason anyways. I didn't even think Kenyon Green could run downfield. He's like 12 speed. They accepted that penalty? Forgive me, Kenyon. You've actually done us a favor. Would have been third and 10. I'd rather take a second and 15. I lied. Nope, good catch for Rudolph. We gained six. And I got to say, I don't know if I trust myself. So uh, even though I know this guy's blitzing... I might just uh, take it safe. Ah, boy, is big. Oh, I thought he had the angle. While we are likely looking at a two-possession lead, the Eagles' defense still does kind of help the team inch closer to winning this game. The field goal is, of course, good. Maybe I should have actually showed that one because it is actually really significant. Oh, my Lord. No, thank you. We're not really even ready for this. And Glover puts on even a number four or five hit stick on Swift. Pretty much everyone on this D-line has hit stick that man. That line is struggling. And normally it's, I mean, pretty good. I mean, most plays it's been good against us. That's a really good play to set something up, especially for Gold, who's been able to make plays like that. With seven minutes left, I mean, even if you take a sack here, this is a uh, go-for situation. So, of course, on potential third and two, they're fourth and two, you go for it. We're stacking kind of the wrong side. And we were not wrong to as the counter kind of walked into it. You got to go for this. You have no choice. All right, game on the line. I still cannot run commit because if this is a throw, we let them walk right into this game. And we blow it up wrong. They might still get a big play out of it. I mean, they do, but you know what I mean? Touchdown play. We almost blew that up. I should have maybe contained my spot, but at the same time, if we don't meet him in the hole, we give him momentum, he gets the first down. But if we catch that foot... If we grab him before he gets that angle, oh, we're looking. We're looking good, and good teamwork. Gain of three for Barrow. Takeaways, third rank in the league, only one today. But at the same time, we've limited them from doing really anything on offense for the most part. Move everyone over. I'm kind of feeling Griffin. Get some momentum going. Bull rush into the club. Perfect coverage, yet somehow caught. Ball's even kind of bad, and it still works out. Smith with a great catch. Clock's not really a concern for them. We've been in the driver's seat for the majority of this game, but at the same time, it is far from cleanly over. Looks good. Definitely not over. And that is a burn. Stingley torched for 23 by A.J. Brown. And we have a field goal game. Looking back at this one, you can see he burns him off the line. Attempted press by Stingley just does not cut it. I mean, Sermon needs to be over there. Oh, is it a blitz? Oh, well, maybe, maybe that's my fault for blitzing him, but... Yeah, burned off the line, and that is, that's a GG. And we are not scared. We will return this ball if it is a smart return. And I think it's a smart return. Judges had a, a couple of looks this game, and that was another one of them to the 29. Rudolph, big game today, but mainly coming off of one big play through the air deep. And uh, we would love to see another one of those, another RPO-type play. We've been a little iffy at really even just making sure we don't run downfield too far and outside Boyer will gain about four and the RPO is hard to master on defense at least been struggling with it and we cut back maybe too hard get blasted by a big old Jalen Carter Revan Jordan coming in Mackie deep Pierce I mean we got a lot of tight ends in see that route running 
And not going to get the ball off. Maybe should have threw to Pierce. But one thing is for sure, a massive sell. What I saw was Mackie getting open, but I thought the guy, like, stepped up. So I thought he was going to run underneath and I was going to have Mackie, but that was not the case. This punt looks kind of decent. Doesn't need to be fielded well by us, but still, good job to get him out of bounds. So the 21, under three minutes left, and the Eagles have a chance to tie or win this game on this drive. And, I mean, I'll always take the drama. The drama's fun, but didn't intend for it to be dramatic. And outside can't get... Hello? Is that Murray? Why is he standing? The, the ball's gone. That guy's, like, blind or something. What is he doing? No contract for you, I guess. That one play determines it all. Well, they're, they're not done. Okay. They're not done. They know that they can still run the ball. They have time. Two-minute warning. Anything goes. Get there. Wow, really catches that. Four yards gain, though, with the clock moving. That's... Was that, like, an action figure pose? What was going on there? Did they think they were, like, a figure that you, like... Just... Like a statue? Oh, what the hell am I even looking at here? Oh, wow. Hit the ball and he holds on. I thought we were looking at like a delayed read or a QB drawers. I don't know what I was looking at. Going to try to get a press. Missed hard on A.J. Brown. Going to try to get depth. And the sack from Will Anderson. I mean, they don't need to worry about the clock too much. But at the same time, now they're maybe getting a little too nonchalant. You can get in there. Spin move and perfectly thrown over the middle. Huge hit by Sermon. And now they're going to call a timeout. I mean, press man... Giving the, the D-line a chance, I suppose, to get in there, which they did with Will Anderson. So, felt like it was an okay decision. Didn't really work out, though. Not getting off the line at all as Hudson tried to swap. Perfect timing, but obviously not in position to swap. Anyways, Swift landing out of bounds for nine. I'm just, like, debating it because, like, I, I don't know if I blitz. If I blitz, I give him a chance to score a touchdown. But if I cover, I mean, we're going to overtime, and that could be... I mean, this looks not good. <laughs> this looks not good. We got to make a stop. There's not really much to it. Blitzing with Harris. A, a sack here would... Swat! Overthrown, thankfully. Sack here would pretty much guarantee overtime. And I thought that was a touchdown. I think we drop back Will Anderson because we're not really getting a whole lot of pressure from that side anyways. We got lucky with a couple of guys running into each other on the other one. Leaving the running back open. That's fine. And Will Anderson was literally right there. Touchdown, Eagles, they have the lead. Will Anderson's in a hook. Maybe act as if it's a spy, perhaps. Maybe I should have just spied in general. And might have been my fault in general because he probably would have had the, the edge contained. And instead, Jalen just sees the weakness, scores. Pretty big opportunity here on the field goal block is not only could we make it worth three points is enough, we could also make it worth three points is enough to win. A bit of an ultra choke here, but... Still 34 seconds. I like Judge. I just like Judge. And doesn't really get much help, though. The guys are, like, waiting for him. Like, in my personal opinion, if you somehow let the kicker turner get past you before the 20-yard line, you should just be pulled. Like, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Don't Don't catch this. Okay, that sucked very much so. Kind of just panicked. I was like, just throw it to somebody, get the ball to somebody, and that did not work. <laughs> what a catch, though. Boyer, please. A terrible throw. Are we even going to make it even look good? Probably not. The screen pass has been so hit or miss. Some plays we get, like, I don't even know what screen to run. But some plays we get, you know, a huge gainer. Some plays we only get, like, 10. They're bringing a blitz off the wrong side, so maybe... The question is, do I run out the gate? Oh, I have to run out the gate. And what a play by Stroud to make that play exist. Maybe should have just went down early to get that field goal or the timeout. Obviously, we're not going to get a field goal in this one, but that's a pretty big play to set something up, perhaps. God, I wish a field goal would have done something for us here, but it just won't. Stick and nod, but you run the streak in behind with Ford. I don't know if you get the score, but you might set up something here. And that's a really good throw. Go down. I don't think you hit another throw that gets you closer. I think you just 
take a take a shot, right? Nico could be one on one here. I like Ford on the inside because he's our fastest guy. So it might drag someone in thinking we're trying to like run short and then get in there. Let's see what we got. I mean, it's always going to be Nico. He catches it! And is in! Oh my! How in the world? Back shoulder, the ultimate chemistry. There is no way. It's a little short of the end zone, so you can kind of see why the corner wouldn't have seen it coming. Unbelievable. And the question is, they're going to say he caught this, but is he actually in the end zone? I actually don't know. That is... That was close. I mean, even when he was falling down, I was like, this is close. We're going to have to take a look at this thing. Unbelievable play. I mean, they're going to say it's a win anyways. This might be one of those things where it's like, yeah, we got it wrong on the field. But hey, it counts. That is absurd. Let's see this. I mean, it was always going to be Nico. He has a step on him, so you can't really tell if you're the corner where it's going to go. It's going to come in, come in short. And then Nico needs to fight. And he does get it. Okay, I mean, and from the back angle, it looks like he's... Well, actually, I mean, from every angle, he's pretty, he's pretty close. But, yeah, I mean, you don't really need much time to realize he is in. So, wow. That is just... That is crazy. That angle on the catch, too, is sick. For him to, to angle like that, throw his body into the wind dangerously, and then land it and fight enough to get that end zone touchdown. I mean, what a play. Oh, my. What a play. I don't think you can script that. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I did not believe we were going to finish that with a touchdown. I just didn't. We got in range, though. Gave ourselves a chance. For some reason, they gave the one-on-one -on -one look. Uh, I kind of actually want to look back at the play just to see if any of our plans for dragging them out even worked. Because obviously the safety is not there. Uh, Devontae and Rudolph combining for like the same game despite Rudolph's being like pretty much all in one play. Whereas Smith was consistent. Pretty pretty crazy itself. Uh, a lot of different players got involved in that game. I mean pretty much everyone on each side of the, the game caught the ball. Hassan Reddick two sacks. Will Anderson with one. Carter with one. Davis with one. Parison with a blitz sack, Glover and Henry Toe -to with a sack combined at the goal line. Noah Gwenogany with an interception, which was just a Hail Mary uh, defense interception. And a victory. Do they run zone coverage on this? Wait, why wouldn't they have just ran three-man deep? They ran a four-man. They, they covered underneath with, I mean, well, essentially two players because Nakobe gets back too late. And the safety kind of had no choice but to uh, to go for Boyer. Otherwise, he would have been open. And, I mean, we threw this. I wouldn't even say early, but the ball came in shallow. And the back shoulder, I mean, it works. I mean, I've never had a play like that in, like, my Madden history. I mean, that is one of the most unbelievable finishes ever. Didn't allow under 24 yards, but everything else seems to be uh, achieved. Did we have any scenarios? I don't know. Do we have any players we could trade or trade for positions-wise? Maybe. Heartbreaker for Philadelphia and an electric finish for us. The stadium would have absolutely crumbled at home as the crowd would have died. Nico Collins, I mean, I don't think there was ever a chance he was on the trade block here before the deadline, but if there was, that's gone. Right? There is nobody asking for that anymore as he really came alive when we needed him there. Unbelievable finish. Looking at the defense, is there anything there? I mean, Edge wouldn't be the best if we lost a player or two, but that's kind of most teams, I would say. DT, maybe one more, but Fatu Kasi played pretty well when we lost both of our DTs, so as long as we don't make a habit of it, I really don't think we need anybody on this squad, so I probably don't think we're going to be spending anything in uh, the trade deadline situation, so... I doubt you're going to see anyone new, but maybe, maybe, maybe we find somebody that makes sense or they're on the trade block and they just speak to us. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I really do appreciate your continued support on the channel. Maybe uh, follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, Care plays for non-mounted content. Should have seen a Spider-Man video up yesterday. And uh, there's at least another video or two later today, so check them out. 
And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys come back for next video. What a crazy one. But until next video, see ya.